Trunks and Goten have to be some of the laziest characters Dragon Ball has ever seen. And it's really too bad because these two have more than what it takes to become the strongest warriors in Universe 7. Yes, even stronger than their fathers. And this is due to a plethora of things. From the crazy potential of their genetics to the abundant amount of teachers they could learn from. There isn't a limit that these two can't break if they wanted to. But the only thing holding them back is themselves. Goku, Vegeta, Gohan, Piccolo, and the rest of the Z Fighters already did all the work. Through their blood, sweat, and tears, they discovered new bastions of power and paved the roads to reach them. All Trunks and Goten have to do is use them, but since the series won't let them, I guess I will. In today's video, let's see what limits Goten and Trunks could shatter if they actually tried. But besides the two half Saiyans, who do you guys think is the most wasted character in the Dragon Ball verse? Now before we completely dive in, I wanted to give these two a reason to try. A catalyst that could put them on this path of power, something that was missing in the canon series. A purpose. Goku's goal throughout the Buu saga was to make sure that the next generation could survive without the older one, something akin to a passing of the torch. And unfortunately, this goal wasn't really achieved. However, I do believe that if Goku had imparted his wisdom onto the young Saiyans in an extremely serious manner, we can say that this moment would have been the spark that put them on this path. Now, when it comes to the Buu saga, there really isn't much they could have done in terms of obtaining power, as it seems as if they did everything they could. They used a time chamber, albeit for a few months, and they also learned fusion dance. And because of that, I won't be going over this saga. So let's move on. The first path to power that these two didn't utilize was learning from the numerous warriors on Earth, particularly their own fathers. Although it can be argued that Goku and Vegeta aren't the best when it comes to teaching, they're still the strongest beings that Earth has to offer. And if Goten and Trunks wanted to live up to their potential, this should have been their first step. Luckily for them, it's as simple as asking their fathers to train. For Goten, this would be an easy task to complete, as Goku would be more than likely to be excited to see that one of his sons is interested in fighting, and he'd jump at the chance to mentor him. The only hurdle that he would have had would be his mother, but seeing as she has become more lenient in recent years, even going as far to train Goten herself and the Buu Saga, she probably let the young Saiyan spend time with his father. As for Trunks, he would at first hit a wall due to the fact that Vegeta isn't very keen on teaching, but he'd easily overcome that problem the moment that he mentions that both he and Goten are trying to get stronger. Now with both the hybrid Saiyans training with their fathers, what would happen? Well, starting off with Goten, his training would be far more diverse. From training with Goku to training with the numerous allies Goku has made over the years, Yamcha, Krillin, Tien, Piccolo, as well as Gohan would play a part in Goten's progression. You see, Goku would more than likely allow his son to go out and experience what the world has to offer him. In a sense, this could be seen as what Master Roshi instructed Goku to do after the 21st World Martial Arts Tournament. And because of this, by the end of the four years, Goten would have walked away with an abundant amount of techniques and fighting styles. The Spirit Bomb, Destructo Disc, Dodon Ray, Solar Flare, and the Monsenko would all be a part of his arsenal, as well as the Turtle and Crane School fighting styles. As for Trunks, his training would be far more straightforward. Day in and day out, he'd be inside of the gravity chamber with his father, training himself to failure. Yes, for the most part, Trunks' training would be nothing more than extreme strength training. And by the end of the four years, Trunks would emerge with a tremendous amount of power, accompanied by some of Vegeta's signature attacks such as the Gallic Gun and the Big Bang Attack, with the Final Flash being the last thing he'd be looking to learn. Now with their 4 years of training complete, the big questions left to answer are, would these two unlock the Super Saiyan form within this time, and which one of the warriors would be stronger? I do believe that 4 years would have been more than enough time for the young Saiyans to tap into new levels of Super Saiyan, with Trunks tapping into it first due to solely focusing on strength training, and because of that same training, Trunks would slightly outperform Goten when it came to power. Now with that out the way, how would Goten and Trunks perform during Battle of Gods? Well, it's safe to say that regardless of their power, it wouldn't have ended well. The only change that would have occurred is that they'd simply put up more of a fight against Beerus when they finally decided to fuse, and Beerus would make note that they were the strongest being that he fought up until that point. But even with the introduction of Beerus making their progression look like nothing, if they had bothered to train with their fathers over the four years, they'd already be absolute powerhouses, rivaling characters like Super perfect selves or even outright surpassing him. All of this at the ages of 11 and 12. The second path to power that these two didn't utilize was tapping into God Key. Now at first I thought it would be as easy as the young duo asking for the God ritual to be done on them. But the more that I looked into it, the more that I realized that it wouldn't be that simple. And that's because of Vegeta and to a lesser degree, Goku. Now you must be confused about why I believe that these two would seemingly stunt the growth of their own sons. Well it's because of two reasons hard work, and discipline. 
things that the god ritual lacks. You see, the ritual is just an effortless way for a Saiyan to gain an abundant amount of strength extremely quickly, a path to power that neither Goku or Vegeta are very fond of. And just like how Master Roshi taught Goku to always strive to better himself, I can see both Goku and Vegeta trying to teach their sons a lesson that there is no shortcut to true power. And I believe that at this point in their training, both Goten and Trunks would agree to some extent. Now with the God of Ritual off the table, how does the next year play out? Well, for the most part, Trunks and Goten would continue to train with their fathers, and it wouldn't be until Vegeta becomes a student of Whis where things begin to change. With Trunks now being more motivated than ever, he'd most definitely want to join his father but the only problem he'd have is his priorities on Earth, namely his mother and attending school. Luckily for him, all he'd have to do is let his father know, and at this point I do believe Vegeta would have grown close enough to Trunks that he'd go out his way to find a solution. So Vegeta looking for a way to have his son partake in Whis's training while still being able to come back to Earth on a day to day basis would get in contact with the Supreme Kai with Whis's help. Remembering how the Supreme Kai was able to seamlessly teleport from place to place, Vegeta would ask him for help and I do believe that he would say yes due to the fact that Vegeta Vegeta would have threatened him if he had declined. Now with a system setup that allows Trunks to continue to train with him while being able to take care of his earthly endeavors, Vegeta and Trunks would train with Whis for the next 6 months and once Goku finds out he tag along with his son. So for the rest of the year, Goten and Trunks would train with Whis whenever they had the time and by the start of ROF, I can see the young Saiyans tapping into Super Saiyan God. However, since they wouldn't be training with Whis as much as their fathers would, it's highly unlikely that they tap into Blue. Now when Frieza arrives on Earth, if Goten and Trunks happen to be there, they'd be the ones going up against the tyrant, seeing as they're the strongest ones there. Now during their fight, I do believe that Frieza would quickly realize that he can't hold back against these two and the moment that he enters his gold form, Goten and Trunks would obviously fall behind. That is until they fuse. If a Super Saiyan God Goten takes the fight seriously from the beginning, then Golden Frieza is all but finished. However, knowing Goten, he's going to play around and that's probably going to cost him, either by the timer running out or Frieza destroying the earth out of desperation. Anyways, regardless of what happens, Frieza will still be defeated either by Goku, Vegeta, or Goten. Now in terms of strength, Goten and Trunks would be able to solo all of DBZ with ease, from Raditz all the way up to Super Buu, showing us again that they could have been insanely powerful if they actually tried. The third path to power not utilized by these young warriors was not something that they could have acquired without the previous path to power that being Super Saiyan Blue. Now unlike the previous path, this shouldn't be too hard to achieve, as all they'd have to do is continue their training with Whis, and they'd eventually unlock the form. It would take them a bit longer due to having to attend school and other things on Earth, but I do believe that by the time the Tournament of Destroyers is held, they'd already have the form. Now with the power of Super Saiyan Blue at their fingertips, what changes would occur during this tournament? Well with them being as strong as they are, they'd most likely fill out the rest of the positions, replacing the likes of Piccolo and Boo. We can say that the lineup goes like this. First is Goku, followed up by Goten, Vegeta, Trunks, and last but not least, Monaka. Now with 4 Super Saiyan Blues on their team, they'd slaughter the competition with little difficulty. After Goku's mishap with Frost, Goten would run through the rest of Universe 6. That is until he reaches Hit where he'd lose to his time skip, and the same would happen with Vegeta and Trunks, as base Super Saiyan Blue is no match for the Assassin, leaving Goku to do what he did in canon, and that's use Blue Kaioken x 10 to take on Hit, and that would put an end to this saga. So although their inclusion here wouldn't change much, their strength by the end of the tournament would rival that of Golden Frieza from the previous saga, possibly even stronger, making them come third and fourth in terms of strength to their fathers. The fourth path to power that these two would chase after if they wanted to one day exceed their fathers would be the Kaioken. After the events of the Tournament of Destroyers and witnessing Goku merge the ferocious power of the Kaioken with the tranquil essence of Super Saiyan Blue, the young warriors would be enamored by the thought of tapping into those levels of power, and by simply axing Goku they could get access to King Kai's planet. Once they they could commence their training. This would obviously take away from their time with Whis, but it'd be worth it in the long run. As for how long it would take them, well I'd say 1-2 to two months at most, being the prodigies that they are. Now the part that would most likely take the longest is trying to mix both the Kaioken and the blue form. As we know, Goku worked on this in secret and wasn't even sure if it would have worked when he used it, even saying that he only had a 1 in 10 chance of it working. So this is what the young warriors would spend the majority of their time focusing on, and by the start of the future Trunks saga, we can say that they barely have a grasp on it. And when Goku Black rears his ugly head, Goten and Trunks will go to the future alongside their fathers and future Trunks. Now with the inclusion of these two in the stories at these level of powers, it's safe to say that this saga would end far faster than it originally did. You see, Goku and Vegeta had to retreat from the future the first time due to Goku Black's increasing power and Zamasu's immortality, two things that are still present, however with Goten and Trunks there, the moment that their fathers could no longer keep up, they just fuse, and a Super Saiyan Blue Goten would be far more than enough to handle both Goku Black and Zamasu. Obviously, they would 
wouldn't be able to take out Zamasu due to his immortality, but Goku Black would still be on the chopping block. Now if Goten manages to destroy him in time, then the saga would be over, simple as that. However, if Goku Black and Zamasu manage to fuse, then they'd have no choice but to retreat. Even a Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken times 10 Gotenks wouldn't have been enough to take on the powerhouse known as Fuse Zamasu. And this is where the saga would probably take an interesting turn. If Zamasu doesn't chase after our heroes and stays in the past, then he most likely complete his Zero Mortal plan while our heroes are gone, and when they return, everything would pretty much play out how it did in the anime. However, if he does go after them, then we'd most likely get to see a fight that we didn't get to see in the original series. That being Beerus versus Merch Zamasu, a fight that couldn't happen due to the rules of time traveling and stuff like that. But since Zamasu would appear in the main timeline, he'd be fair game, and after a short battle, Beerus would more than likely wipe the floor with the fuse being and put him out of his misery with a full power of Kai, making the score 3 Beerus, 0 Zamasu. Now the thing about these two endings is, due to Gotenks being involved, Goku would have never used the Zeno button, which is what led to us having two Zenos in one universe, and Trunks' future would be spared. As a result, Trunks and Micah live in their own universe without having to worry about running into their other selves. In my opinion, a much better way to send those characters off instead of what we actually got in the anime. Now in terms of strength, seeing as Goten and Trunks would have barely gotten any time with the Kaioken, due to the future Trunks saga and the Tournament of Destroyer saga only being a few months apart, we can say that while unfused they'd be able to stack a times five on top of their blue forms and with that power they'd surpass super saiyan blue goku and vegeta the fifth path to power that could have been attained if goten and trunks wanted to reach levels that could rival a few of the gods would be refining what they currently have you see the time between the future trunks saga and the top was a dead point as both Goku and Vegeta were distracted by other things, meaning that Goten and Trunks would have to find other ways to gain strength rather than relying on their fathers to guide them. So while their fathers would be occupied, these two would continue their training with each other and they'd spend the next few months refining the Kaioken, learning how to weave higher levels of the technique seamlessly into their blue forms, allowing them to reach times 20 with ease and once they gained mastery over this, they'd start looking for other ways to gain strength and they'd eventually conjure up an idea. They'd try to find a way to mix the red-headed god form with a another Super Saiyan level, find a way to stabilize it, and hopefully weave in the Kaioken using the time chamber in the process in order to speed up the progress, and by the start of the T.O.P., Goku wouldn't have to look far for extra help as Goten and Trunks would be right there. Now the question is who would they replace? Well if Goku wanted the best team at this moment, he'd replace some of the weaker ends such as Master Roshi and Tien. I decided to leave Frieza in as he's important to the story, as without the revival of Frieza, we'd lose both the Broly Saga as well as the Granola the Survivor Saga, and I believe it'd be more interesting interesting if they remained in the timeline. I know, I know, realistically this probably wouldn't have happened, but I ask that you guys turn a blind eye to it. Now with this new and improved team, how would they fare against the rest of the universes? Well, they'd be firing on all cylinders. Every one of their fighters would be absolute powerhouses, with the only weak link being Krellin in terms of pure strength. Due to Goten and Trunks' brash nature, I can see them going all out right from the gate. And because of this, they would clear out many of the fighter enemies and quickly become the most fearsome warriors within the tournament. They'd continue down this path of eliminating everyone, not leaving much in their wake, and it wouldn't be until Trunks brings up the idea of taking on the biggest and baddest guy in the tournament, Jiren. Tobo and Disuwa would try to stop them, but Jiren would give the young warriors a chance, intrigued by their immense strength at such a young age. Trunks and Goten would tap into their blue forms and unleash a times 20 Kaioken, and they'd begin the battle with the Titan of Universe 11. However, even with their immense strength, they'd quickly learn that it wouldn't be enough, and as a result, they would unveil what they spent the last two years learning and mastering. Their power would shoot up as lightning began to crackle around their body, and with a yell, the duo would ascend into the next level of Super Saiyan Blue. Super Saiyan Blue 2. Now I see why they never went down this path. Anyways, once in SSB2, they'd unleash a times 20 Kaioken and rush the Titan, and although Goten and Trunks would be the strongest warriors Jiren has seen up until this point, he'd still take them down with ease committing them for their strength and how much power they were able to achieve at such a young age. However, before he could eliminate them, Goku and Vegeta would step in to save them. Goku, just like any anime, goes up against Jiren alone, asking Vegeta to let him test his abilities against Universe 11's strongest. Vegeta steps aside and Goku's fight would go as it did the anime. As for Goten and Trunks, they'd slow down in the tournament due to the immense power they had just used, as well as the fight with Jiren. And for the most part, everything would play out as it normally did, with the only differences being that Universe 7 would eliminate the other contestants far quicker due to the inclusion of Goten and Trunks. And by the final showdown, most of Universe 7 would be present, with Krellin and Piccolo being the only ones who would have been eliminated because, well... Yeah, I don't think that Goten and Trunks' inclusion would have stopped those events from happening.
Also, Android 18 would still be in a fight due to the fact that she wouldn't have to sacrifice herself to save 17, seeing as they'd have more than enough firepower to defeat any Laza with ease. Back with Goten and Trunks, they'd try to team up with their fathers against the Titan of Universe 11, stacking a times 20 Kaioken on top of their Super Saiyan blue forms to keep up. But even with their added power, this wouldn't be enough. In retaliation, Goku would tap into times 20 Kaioken, and Vegeta would unlock Blue Evolution, while Goten and Trunks ascend into SSB2. This would seemingly put Jiren on the back for a little while and our warriors morale would skyrocket. Over with the rest of Universe 7, Gohan and Frieza's fight against this bow would play out the same way it did in the anime. As for Topo, he would have to face off against both Android 17 and 18. The two androids would give Topo a hard time due to their ability to fight in perfect unison, and he'd lose the moment that Frieza comes to aid them. Frieza would antagonize Topo like he did in the anime, and Topo would obtain his G.O.D. form. This would put them all at a disadvantage, and once Goten and Trunks seized this, they'd stop their fight with Jiren and try to eliminate Topo quickly before he becomes a bigger problem. Now with Goten and Trunks leading the charge, Topo would get overwhelmed and they'd eventually eliminate him, leaving Jiren to face off against 8 of Universe 7's warriors. They'd all rush the Titan giving it everything they had, and due to the sheer annoyance of constantly being bombarded by attacks, Jiren would stop holding back. Frieza and 18 would be the first to fall, followed by Android 17 who sacrifices himself in hopes of eliminating Jiren. Goku, Vegeta, Goten, and Trunks all stand exhausted in front of the Titan of Universe 11. All out of options, Goten and Trunks finally decide to fuse. Gotenks emerges and taps into SSB2 and unleashes a times 40 Kaioken, causing the Realm of Void to shake and Jiren cracks a smile. Gotenks rushes in not having much time and he manages to stalemate Jiren. A fierce battle ensues between the two and Jiren enjoys every moment of it, giving the two warriors praise for their accomplishments but he apologizes for having to cut down such gifted individuals. Eventually the fusion would falter and Goten and Trunks split and Jiren would knock them off the stage. After this everything goes normally, with Vegeta sacrificed to MUI Goku vs Jiren to the final battle, only difference being that both Android 17 and 18 would be the remaining contestants. So although Goten and Trunks were eliminated, they still made an impact, impressing the gods and getting praise from the titan of universe 11, Jiren. All things that could have been achieved if they had actually tried. And with that, this puts an end to the TLP as well as an end to this part. Now, I decided to leave this off at where the anime ended, as going into the Broly movie and onwards would make this video drag on far too long. So by the end of the anime's original run, Goten and Trunks would be only second to MUI Goku, surpassing Blue Evolution Vegeta and Blue Kaioken x 20 Goku for the time being due to the power of Super Saiyan Blue 2 mixed with Kaioken x 20. But with that, thank you to everyone that watched this video. I hope you have a great day. Peace, peace. Deuce, deuce.